Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, hello good people. Mark Holmes here and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I, I have to laugh, man. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is too funny. <laughs> wow. Th th this is cray cray. So here here we are, okay? And I am um, sitting here thinking about how the Cowboys have not done Dak Prescott's contract and we are of course getting ready for free agency and we have yet to do any moves whatsoever and all the talk is that you know Dak, Dak Prescott he's going to have to play he or the, the rumors are that he's going to play out his contract at 59 million dollars that the Cowboys have had enough and that it's time to let him walk and it is crazy how it is that that, you know that, that we are here. I have to laugh about all of this because this is oh man, this is crazy. I want to play for you ESPN's thoughts on why the Cowboys will not get Dak Prescott signed. Why they're they're ready to move on. Because there are better options out there for him. Let's go to the tape right now. Let's go to it. Whoo, boy. Deshaun Watson is sort of hovering over all of this mm -hmm. NFL draft. And obviously that would be a huge shakeup if something like that were to happen with the Cowboys. Yeah, it would be. And to Dan's point, I think what he's saying is Dak's not elite. Deshaun Watson is elite. But sometimes you've got to pay the really good 100%. ones that aren't elite that kind of money that they need. And in this division, guys, if you're not going to go forward with Dak, if you, if you do, I'm say if you do go forward with Dak first, you're ahead of the game. you got the Giants. Is Daniel Jones the right guy? They're hoping he is. The Eagles, maybe Jalen Hurts, maybe not. Washington doesn't know who their quarterback will be. If Dak's your guy and you're moving forward with him, you're ahead of the game in that division by miles. So uh, unless Daniel Jones you know, keeps improving and closes that gap. So I'm with Dan on him not being elite, but sometimes you got to pay these guys like they are elite. We've seen that with numerous quarterbacks in the NFL. So sometimes you just got to do it, even though you may know he's not special and not one of the top two, three, four quarterbacks in the league. You know, maybe circumstance dictate. You got to keep them and you got to overpay them. Further, Mel, let, let me just throw this back. And, Hold and, on a and, second, and, Dan, because Ed Werder came on this show the other day and said, regardless of trading him, if the Cowboys don't get a long-term deal done with Dak, they would be negligent if they don't take a quarterback at number 10, where they currently sit. Now, you don't have any of the five still sitting mm -hmm. there, but why do you think of that? If they don't get a deal done with Dak, but he's on the tag, should the Cowboys take a quarterback? I don't think one will be there, Greeny. I think you have to move up. You would be at 10, and you would be on that fringe of maybe being able to go up two, three, four spots to get that quarterback. Problem you run into here is it's going to be you're going to give up some draft choice to go up and get that guy, and you're still not sure if he will be what Dak Prescott already is. You just don't know. Uh, you hope. That a Justin Fields and a Trey Lance and a Mac Jones will be really good, but you don't know. We know what Dak is. And I understand he's not super elite or elite, but he's a really good quarterback. And like I say, and in that division, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. That's going to put you ahead. That's going to make you the favorite to win that division. I also think offensive line's a neat area. Rayshon Slater from Northwestern, Elijah Vera Tucker from USC would make sense. The cornerback, whether if it's not Sertan from Alabama, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. So I would rather use that pick on either a corner or an offensive lineman and have Dak as my quarterback than move Dak or do something with Dak there and have to try to figure out which quarterback do I like and which young quarterback I'm moving forward with. Uh, that would be a dangerous situation to put yourself in. Diana Rossini, help me. If, if the Cowboys don't get the long-term deal worked out with Dak and there is no reason to believe they will based on what has happened, how should we expect that to play out? They're going to have to figure out who's going to play the quarterback position. They're going to have to do that. And in terms of what they're thinking now, the thought process when I was talking to sources with Dallas just two days ago was that they're going to be able to work this out either way, whether it's the tag or the long-term deal. The conversations I was having was more about what they're going to do with that 
10th pick. And it's more in the direction of what Mel was just talking about with the offensive line, which, you know, you think about Dallas. We don't talk about them needing an offensive line. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, Because they've always been so great there, but we saw so many injuries last year. So in terms of the organization, the sense I'm getting from those that are working in scouting and in coaching right now, it's that this is going to get hammered out. Canty, what do you think? I I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, here's the thing. We're talking about this negotiation. It really isn't a negotiation. (laughs) This is a stick up by Dak Prescott because he has so much leverage. It's no gun, no mask. Put the money in the bag. At this point, why would Dak settle for a deal that's below market when he's only one season away from true free agency in the market being able to command over $40 million a year? It doesn't make sense for Dak Prescott to settle for a team-friendly deal. If Jerry Jones wanted something like that, he would have done it a couple of seasons ago. Just last week, the San Diego Padres paid Fernando Tatis Jr. four years before they had to and gave him $340 million. Do you know why? Because it gave them the flexibility to be able to spread that hit of their payroll over 14 years. If the Cowboys were so concerned with the structure in the salary cap, they would have done this deal years ago. Dan, I'll give you the final word. Go. Baseball doesn't have a salary cap, so that's why Tatis can you can pay him whatever you want. I, I'm not saying Dak Prescott should, should play for $20 million. Do I think that Dak can look? Because here's the thing. Chris, you know this. You go into the NFL as a young player with one goal. Get to a second contract. Now that second contract is going to always be different for guys. We know that's going to happen for Dak Prescott. He has earned a ton of money. So now the question is, does Dak just want to get a ton of money? Like, that's it? Because once you, as a good quarterback, take a ton of money from your football team, team success. It's never happened in the NFL. So Dak can ask himself, maybe I will take less than what the market demands, but still get a ton of money and go, what Patrick did another offensive lineman go get us a better defense that's what i'm saying Mm -hmm. you're a good player take a really good contract not the greatest that you can so you can win a ton of games because the last three years you're 29 and 25 as a football team i'm being told that there was that someone has tweeted back i I can't i mean a little oh it's tad prescott tad prescott (laughs) has tweeted that is dak's brother um Dan Orlovsky saying he's been correct about Dak. Bro, what's your stand on Dak? You badmouthed him for years in favor of your boy Wentz and then favored Dak over Wentz. I have proof. Today you're back to your old ways. Just make up your mind already. <laughs> oh, Dad, Ted Prescott has responded to things on our show multiple times. Go ahead, Dan. What? I've never badmouthed Dak Prescott. I've literally said since day one, he's a good player. That's not badmouthing oh. the guy. I've said he's a remarkable oh, dude. Shit. Everything I hear about him is he's a great leader. But my job is to be as honest as what my eyes tell me to be. He's not great. He's not elite. No, he's good. The second thing is I've never flip-flopped. I've never flip-flopped. I think Carson Wentz is a more talented player. I think he's, he's a guy that has, one, been in the MVP conversation. Dak has not that late in the season. Two, he's carried a depleted roster. Dak has not. Those are facts. And I don't know if Dominique Foxworth or Marcus Spears wrote that tweet. For Tad, but the reality is I've never <laughs> bad melt him. I think he's a good player. I just don't think he should be the highest paid quarterback in football. Wow. This is this shit's got me crying laughing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. You, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and toss into this whole situation what may actually be going on. Could it be? Is it possible? Is it possible at all that since last Thursday, Dak Prescott just became a first-time father, that Dak Prescott and his lovely girlfriend have had baby Mary Jane? Yeah, do you love me, Mary Jane? I'm sorry, MJ. I'm just assuming Mary Jane, but it could be. It could be the J could be for Jace, his brother that passed. And I don't know who the M is. I don't know. Or it could be Michael Jordan. I don't know who it is. I wish I did. It'd be some breaking news that I would love to be able to put out there. But could it be that the Dallas Cowboys and Dak are like, why don't you enjoy and spend this time with your daughter? Because we got a lot of work to do. OTAs are coming up, you know, next month and things like that. We got time to get your contract done. Enjoy life right now because we got a lot of work to do. Enjoy now. Take your time. Take a week or two. 
with your baby, and then we'll get on it. Because we know the Cowboys, first of all, are never in a rush to do anything as far as free agency. They don't believe, you know, Stephen Jones detests free agency and refuses to spend any money (coughs) in free agency. (coughs) That's like the ultimate sin would be for him to spend money in free agency. So, (coughs) excuse me, broke-ass media. I laughed too hard that it literally made my throat raw. But that would be my take on where we are with the Dak Prescott contract and things and the real reason why. There's no talk. There's no probably no talking to it. But it's kind of funny how, and I want to, Add on to this as well. Had the Cowboys, which, you know, I keep hearing people say, the Cowboys, they need to get themselves a first-round quarterback. Well, technically, they do have one. They do have one. Yeah, in Trey Lance. Now, keep in mind, here's how that draft went. The Cowboys moved up and took Micah Parsons at number 12. I'm sorry, moved back and took Micah Parsons at 12. They were sitting there at 10, which they ended up also getting a third-round pick, in which case they got Goldston. The number one pick was Trevor Lawrence, first quarterback off the board. The number two quarterback was Zach Wilson. The number three quarterback, which we have on our roster, was Trey Lance. The number four quarterback was Justin Fields. And after that, Mac Jones. So without moving up, the only quarterback you could have gotten was Justin Fields. And had you got Justin Fields, I know some of you say, oh, we would be better off with Justin Fields than Dak Prescott with all the talent we have. Yeah, but you wouldn't have Micah Parsons. There you go. There you go. And looking right now at all of those quarterbacks that were drafted, Trevor Lawrence, of course, is the best of the lot, but we were told he's generational. And he is a turnover machine. Zach Wilson. Trey Lance. Well, we've got him. Justin Fields. Mac Jones. There you go, guys. It's hard to get a quarterback. And it's funny how the more things change, the more things stay the same. Shout out to you, Dan Orlowski. This is for Tad Prescott. Leave me alone. This is for Cowboys fans. I wore your colors. Leave me alone in my mentions. This is for guys like Graziano, but most importantly, this is for my arch nemesis, Dominique Foxworth.